chapter in the fellowship and communion with Jesus Christ. It's through prayer. Some of you already remember Jesus when something happened. You say, oh, Jesus. And sometimes, I don't know if you ever noticed it. People you know don't know the Lord, don't care about the Lord. They talk about Jesus stuff. Huh? They don't go to nobody's church. Every preacher's a crook. Every church member's a sinner as far as they're concerned. But then they always want to talk some Jesus stuff. We have to know where to put them in their place. If you don't know the Lord, you can't talk with him. You only can talk with who you know. You see, we gossip so much in the Bahamas that we even gossip about Jesus. But you only can talk about who you know. Well, let me leave that there. <laughs> you may ask, Pastor, what is persistent prayer? I'm so glad you asked. I am so happy you asked. Pastor, what is persistent prayer? Persistent prayer is the pressing of our desires on God with urgency and perseverance. It is praying with that courage and tension that does not relax or stop until its cry is heard and, it, and its cause is won. That's what persistent prayer is. You don't just pray today for something or for God's blessings over your life. You don't just pray for the Lord to change your son, change your daughter, fix your family. And then it don't happen tomorrow, so you start praying. Persistent prayer is a desire to pray until your cause is won. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to show you in a few minutes from the scripture how long some folk had to pray before the breakthrough came. Some of us want to pray twice. We believe, we believe that something happened and come to church. Come to the front, let Rev pray for you. And that's the end of it. Oh no. Oh no. There's some persistency and for God to pour his blessing in your situation. All right, watch the Bible. Watch, watch the Bible. Watch what happens to men of God and women of God as they pray. They intercede. Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. And he interceded. Oh, he just said, God, you got to. You, got, you, you have to save my, my uh, son. You have, to, you have to save my nephew. You have to save my nephew. And then when God began to say, but Abraham, I hear you, but, but in no way I could do it, he what? He was persistent. And every time God, every time, every time he gave a figure to God and God agreed with him, David, uh, Abraham said, let me try another one. And he kept changing his request to God and every time he changed it with God, then God honored it. Why? Because he's persistent in his prayer. And my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, God will honor your persistent prayer. Pray no him, scare him thing. You get in trouble, not pray. As soon as you get all that trouble, you stop praying. God is not built up. You find him in the hotel. Like, go here and come there. God is not like that. And some of us only want to use God when we're in trouble. Hmm. Jacob, you all remember him, eh? He wrestled all night. Huh? All night, and he was not going to let go until he got blessed. How long, when, when, when was the last time you mothers, your fathers grabbed a hold of the horn of the altar and you wrestled with God all night over your children or your family or the situation? When last have you done that? When last have you grabbed hold of the horns of the altar and said, God, I'm not going to leave you till you save my son?
No, you want to bend down. You can catch it with him. You want to bid him off and bring him to the front for we have to pray for him. Huh? When last have you like wrestled, like Jacob wrestled all night over the soul of your child? Do you love your child? Huh? Or it's only words you're saying. If you love your child, you're like Jacob.